Let's see, where were we? The last video I was fixing my misfire in cylinder three. Since that video, I went on ahead and replaced the rest of the spark plugs along with two coil packs. Those are the only two coil packs I have never replaced on the car. And I figured I'd get the spark plugs and the two coil packs done at the same time. So we got that done, now it's time to tackle another issue, another problem with Subaru. 2019 is going to be a banger and I hope it's not going to be my motor. That's why I get AAA baby. We are stuck on the side of the road. Cam positioning sensor just failed us. My car just blew a huge flame out of the pipe and I'm going to attempt to start it back up after clearing the code. Get the show on the road. Whoa, 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 guys, I bet you did not expect to see me here, but here I am. I need to give you guys some context as to what was going on in the next couple clips. I messed up. I'm just going to say it. I messed up. I make mistakes. It's all part of life. I mistook my camshaft sensor for my crankshaft sensor. Check engine light called for the camshaft sensor in bank one or two or something side A. And I just jumped the gun and immediately thought crankshaft sensor. And that's what you're going to see me replacing in the next couple clips. If any of you guys are wondering where your crankshaft sensor is located on your WX or SDI 2.5 liter, um, just stay tuned and I will be sure to show you. If you guys have other issues with your camshaft sensors, I will also show you that in this video as well. So just stay tuned. I will eventually get to it. Until then, you guys enjoy it and uh, thanks for watching. Bye. So the CPS or crankshaft positioning sensor is going to be under this alternator here. Ah! Man, I love this thing. Let's get a better view here. So but right below the alternator, we're going to have the CPS sensor. It's going to be that clip there, that bolt there. I'm going to remove the alternator. I'll make things easier on me and give you guys a better look at what I'm doing down there. So let's go on ahead and pull this alternator off. I don't think I've ever removed the alternator from this. Um, yeah, so it's going to be first. Let's go for it. So I'm just going to remove a couple 12 millimeter bolts here. We're going to do this one under the belt. This is the locking bolt. Loosen it up a bit. And over here, this is the pivot bolt. So just make sure that's a wee bit loose. Just loose, don't have to take it out. And then this is where you're gonna back this thing all the way down. This is where this ratchet really comes in handy. Here we go. Now that we have the belt loose enough, it should just slide off. And then we're gonna back out this whole screw. That shall release the alternator on that side, and then we'll just have this little pivot bolt with the bracket for the alternator cover. Oh yeah. And the bracket, oh there's a nut on the outside, what? Pull this out, do, 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 do. There you go. So this is what's on the other side there. Boom. Just a little persuasion, we'll get it off here. I'm just gonna let this alternator chill up here and I'll be careful. So here goes nothing. It's a 10 millimeter bolt, so let's break it free. Break it loose and carefully take this off. Let's see what this thing looks like. Here it comes, oh boy. Let's take a deeper look. So the sensor, whoops, that's all it is. Just this little thing. It's a little dirty. Maybe if I just clean that off, we'll have a brand new crankshaft positioning sensor. Maybe if you read the check engine light correctly, you wouldn't even have to mess with this sensor. Sensor just arrived. Here's the part number if any of you guys are interested. Let's go on ahead and install this bad boy.
I did go with the Delphi brand for this. There are cheaper options, but I like the brand Delphi. I also have a couple of coil packs from Delphi. All of my coil packs actually are from Delphi. Delphi, Del Del Delphi. Delphi is what I buy. Here's what it's supposed to look like. Nice and shiny, nice and clean, nice and fresh. Here's the old one. All right, hopefully this unclips nice and easy. I don't want to snap the clip off. Looks like it just pushed down the tab here. It's a little grimy, a little crusty in there. Make sure we get a nice clean plug. Nice clean connection. Nice easy swap out here. Now let's just put it right back in place. Right down in the hole. Gonna put back this 10 millimeter bolt. Get it nice and mounted. Pretty sure it's as easy as this right here. Nothing special about it. Okay, let's torque her down. Don't go crazy on it now. Just nice and easy, it's plastic housing. Just tighten it down enough where you know it won't come loose. Pretty satisfied with that. All right, let's get this alternator back on. We're gonna be real gentle on this alternator because we still have our clip plugged in here. So I don't wanna put any stress on the wires. I'm trying to wiggle it in place here, it's a little tricky. Just a little gentle, a little gentle persuasion, we'll get that in there. It's kind of a tough one to line up the holes because this bracket is pretty tight. I'm gonna throw this bracket on the back side now. Start cranking on it and hopefully you'll line it up right. Nothing to it. It's not really that bad removing the alternator. Just make sure your brackets are <laughs> lined up also or else you'll run out of wiggle room. See, just like that. Make sure that's positioned here. Keep it loose, let's get our belt on now. Make sure your belt's on old pulleys. Power steering, alternator, and the crank down there. Double check everything before you crank it down. Make sure you're in all the grooves, the belt is on all the cranks, all the pulleys. Keep on cranking. My belt was probably way too tight because I was like out of threads. Make sure you follow your owner's manual and set your belt tension to the proper setting. Wow, I can probably use some new belts <laughs> too while I'm at it, jeez. Ah, another day, another day. One thing at a time. Going ahead and crank down that locking bolt. The other side needs to be cranked down as well. A little ratchet can't do much. Gotta bust out some manpower for this. I need it a little tighter than 30 foot pounds. Don't forget to hook your alternator positive lead back up. Don't forget it. You won't get very far if you do. Okay, okay. I hope I did everything correctly. Dude, you didn't even need to replace that sensor. As I say in all my videos, here goes nothing. Seems okay. Fuck. It's happening again. Turning around. Not good, guys. Not good. Let's go something burning. Just a good old Subaru burn, I guess. God. Well, stupid me, I actually replaced the crankshaft sensor when I meant to replace the camshaft sensor. Similar words, but different parts, different pieces, different sensors. The locations are completely different. One is easy to get to, the other one is near impossible to get to. And that's what I'm dealing with right now. Now if this first sensor doesn't fix your issue, the one right below the alternator, there is an additional sensor. It's actually your camshaft sensor, or one of them. I know there's a couple on this car, but you can see the top of it right there. I'm about to unbolt it, but pretty much to get to it, I already had my air pump removed. I removed a couple vent hoses. Um, intercooler isn't mandatory. Yeah, this should be fun to get out and even more fun to put back in there. But get your 10 millimeter wrench on there and you'll be able to get it eventually. It took me a bit. All I used to get the bolt off was a, just a 10 millimeter open end wrench. You can easily slide it in here and get access to the bolt right there. You can see I already have it unplugged there. It's unplugged and half of it's sticking out there. So I have access to it, but I just can't get it all the way out. So I'm a little screwed at the moment. And as you can see, the clearance on the top, there is none. You can see I'm trying to just finagle it, finesse it out. 
and I haven't found the right angle or I, I truly don't even know if this is possible to get out without removing the intake manifold. I don't want to bend it too far, you know? Oh, maybe this, maybe this. All right, bit. Oh, it's so close. It's on the little corner, the little edge over here. Oh my God, I got it. Yes. I don't believe it. Oh my God, look at that. Look at this, it's coming out. It is coming out right here, live on camera. Look at that dirty fucker. Yes, success. And there's our camshaft positioning sensor. Holy hell, that thing's dirty. Thing is a filthy mofo for sure. So yeah, guys, uh, don't make my mistake and don't mistake the camshaft sensor right down there for the, yes, I just mistaked it. Don't do what I did, don't make my mistake, of course. Be sure that you read your check engine light code clearly and thoroughly, because clearly I did not. Yeah, don't waste your time, don't do what I did. Crankshaft is not the camshaft sensor and the camshaft is not the crankshaft sensor. So I'm gonna go on ahead and order myself a brand new one. Even better, instead of ordering it, I went down to my local AutoZone and picked up one of these Duralast ones. It's got limited lifetime warranty, so if anything ever does happen to this, I can go and get it replaced for free. So I can't really beat that. Oh, let's attempt to put this thing back in. <sighs> Getting this 10 millimeter mounting bolt is not easy. So once the sensor is in the hole, getting this in is uh, your next issue. Just gonna try to put this sensor back. I know it'll only go in one way because it really scooted out and only came out one way. Wow, why is putting it in way easier than taking it out? Which I thought it would be the opposite. Just kidding, it's not in yet. Just kind of twist it until you can feel that it has the clearance it needs to get in there. Slowly work your way in. Not sure if I could do it. Yes, got it. Successfully got it out and back in on camera. I don't believe it. Sometimes things just don't go according to plan like that. Just gotta push it past the O-ring. So here's the rusted bolt that I took out right here. And somehow I gotta feed that back in right there to the hole. It's a very tight squeeze. It is doable though, I hope. So just got the bolt in just barely. And then I'm gonna slowly rotate it clockwise until I feel the hole. And then I'm gonna attempt to thread it in. It's very tricky because the sensor is on a slant. So some magical way I ended up getting the bolt started. It is right there. You can see it's partially threaded in and uh, yeah. To get that started, I kind of came in with this hand on the left, got a hold of the bolt, and then I was also able to access the other side with my right hand, and I kind of reached in like that. So I used my both left and right hands to uh, get that bolt situated. So good luck with that. It's not fun. You're gonna bang up your knuckles maybe a little bit. A little bit here and there, you know, it's all part of the game. Just trying to give you guys some tips if you guys ever uh, find yourself having to replace this sensor. It is not fun, but I hope I can help you. All right, everything's put back. Uh, here goes the moment of the truth. I'm gonna start her up. She started right up. It's almost like I knew what I was doing. Well, the car's idling fine right now but I replaced the driver's side sensor and, uh-oh, uh-oh, as I was saying. You guys heard that, right? Oh, no. I think this is bad news. Bad news. Nope. Try again. <laughs> okay, well, upon further research, it appears that I replaced the wrong sensor. I just reread the check engine light. Bank one sensor is bad. Pretty sure bank one is gonna be your passenger side cam sensor. Um, I just screwed myself, didn't I? Wow, I, I really did misread those check engine lights. I really did. I got them all mixed up. Bank one, bank two, sensor A, sensor B, blah, 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 camshaft, crankshaft, blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess it's been a learning curve to say the least. Hey, maybe bank two sensor could have failed me next week. Who knows, I'm glad I got that already replaced. So I guess on to the next one. Hey, let's find the camshaft sensor for bank one. That's gonna be your passenger side. So it's gonna be down, 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 down. See if I can wiggle my phone in and give you guys a look. I think that's it right there. See that 10 millimeter bolt? 
Got the connector on the right, and it just sits right below, uh, I guess, your coolant overflow tank. So you're gonna pull off the two hoses like I did on the other side. I'm gonna pull off these two hoses and reach in there and see if I have access to it. All right, I just pulled off the intake just to get some things out of the way. And I did notice there is a puddle of oil down there. A little puddle of oil. My valve gaskets might be leaking. I know that's pretty notorious on these Subarus. And I have yet to do that, so maybe it is time. But yeah, that's uh, gonna be another issue to address at a later date. But not too late because uh, yeah, that's not good at all. Time to remove those hoses. This is the easy clamp right here. Just push it in, pull it up. This is the one that gives you trouble because that's like a one-time only use. But there is a way to reuse it and I'll try to show you guys. I literally just take a pair of these little snips for cutting little branches and what else. I already unsnipped it. So the way I took it off, I pinched this point and that point there. Just pinch it together and it should unclip for you. Well, just my luck, uh, my hose started to crack a little bit. It's just so old and it's just rock hard at this point. Um, this thing got pretty messed up. Let's see if I can pull it off real quick. And it's almost off. It's just flaking away. Pieces are coming off. See how it just cracked right there? On to the next one. Maybe some of you can reach behind and get to the sensor there, but I'm gonna get a couple of hoses out of the way first. So I just kept prying it and prying it, wiggling and prying it, and eventually it broke free. Now we should have easy access to the sensor. Right about there. It should be accessible now. So the space is a little too tight to get a ratchet in there. So what I did was snuck my wrench in. I went in from the backside here. My wrench right on it right there. You guys, now I am not having a fun time getting this bolt out. I thought it would be a little easier to access and I can get my fingers on it, but it's just not threading out easy. I mean, I broke it loose and everything. It's just a rough thread coming out. So slowly but surely, I guess, just take your time. So don't think I did it just no problem, man. It will take some time. Okay, just got the bolt out. Looks like some Loctite on there. Wouldn't be a bad idea to add some Loctite for myself. Too late now. Or the other side, maybe this side, maybe not, probably not. All right, let's see if I can get this thing out. It only came out one way on the other side. This one looks like it's coming out a lot easier than the other side. Here we are, oh, and my neighbor is mowing his lawn. So there she is, there's the crank, nope, not the crankshaft. This is gonna be the camshaft positioning sensor bank one. I'm gonna unclip it and take a closer look at it. Well, I really hope this is the problem. It's gotta be, there's no other camshaft sensors or crankshaft sensors to my knowledge. I honestly could probably reuse this. I just cleaned it off a bit, it looks fine. But I definitely am not gonna reuse it. I'm gonna get a new one. Get a new one in there and see how she runs. Get these at AutoZone for about 25 bucks or so. So I'm gonna run and get the other one. Hopefully my car will work smooth again. Just got the new sensor. Let's go install this bad boy. I'm gonna plug her in real quick. So we're gonna feed her back into the hole. Back into the dark abyss down there. And dangle it on in there. A little, little, little shake shake action. Tight squeeze. Just make sure the little grommet is all the way flush with it. Now for the bolt. Just wanna ease it on in. One other tip to get that bolt back in. Uh, be sure you're not using uh, a big bulky ratcheting wrench. Um, I was trying to use this for a while, not even the ratcheting side, just this side. And then I uh, realized, uh, why am I using such a big wrench? I have a smaller one. So the smaller one worked a lot better for me. It's easier to get in that little tight space. It still was difficult, so just keep that in mind when you're trying to do this. Is our sensor all nice and tight? So let's put this car back together and hope and pray to everybody that it works. Just getting this hose back on, um, I'm gonna try to show you guys how to reuse these, uh, if you're like OEM, like one time use factory clamps, they're a pain in the butt. But if you don't have any other clamps to replace it with, um, there is a way to reuse them. And I'm gonna attempt to show you that right now. It is a bit difficult, so we're gonna give it the best try. Normally I use something like this, just your average garden shears. Get it right on there. Of course, it's probably not gonna work right now because I'm filming. See, it's pretty difficult to do. Fuck. There's also a special tool you can get to do it, but I have had some luck doing it with something like this. 
Before you take one of those off, you might want to be sure that you have another clamp or something to hold that hose back on. It's a pretty firm fit, but just to be safe, you want to have some extra clampage on there. Can't seem to get this one back on. It's a little too discombobulated. And uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to work, especially not with these things. I'm just not going to get that one back on. Okay, I lied. I got it back on, but it's a little high. I'm going to see if I can scoot it down a bit. It's a little tricky, a little pain in the assy, but you know, just deal with it or just get another one. The other ones are much easier to deal with. But you might as well just throw it away because it's such a pain in the ass. I did notice so much gunk in this intercooler, dude. Oh my god, it's disgusting. I really miss having the full potential of this intercooler. This thing is probably so gunked up, I'm not getting very much coolage going on. But, ah, uh, yeah, just another thing to add to the list, you know? One thing at a time. All right, well, hopefully that little clamp will hold down that hose with that big slit in it. We'll see how that goes. There we are, and I just would like to think that my car is going to run great now. A couple more things to add, and uh, let's start her up. The moment of truth. If this doesn't fix my problem, Subi's for sale. Just kidding, I'd never sell it. Here goes nothing. Let her warm up and see what happens. Come on, baby, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Okay, well, I guess we're going for a little test drive. Car's been idling for like 10 minutes or so. I guess we're good. Go for a little cruise, hopefully no bogging, no cutting out, no jerking. I'm at a loss, I'm at a loss if it doesn't work. My car does need an oil change, I mean it's not past the 3000 or so. But I like to give it an oil change, especially when my car's been sitting, you know. It just doesn't get driven like it used to, so. Maybe I just gotta get on it and have some fun. But So far so good, we're cruising. sensors replaced all at once now I can make note and you know have a little uh, little history on the car I'll know about what mileage those sensors were replaced and go from there so I want to thank you guys for watching the video another video ended in the darkness you know me driving around test driving but I'm glad we came out on top this time and everything worked out um, I tried to be kind of thorough I want to help anybody else out who has the same check engine light or you know whoever's out there maybe you've came across this issue i didn't see any other videos out there on youtube like showing the whole process or even where the sensors were and you know you can only be on the forums for so long and then at some point you just got to go in there and tackle it and that's pretty much what i did i really can't believe my car is fixed i'm very happy because the rain's coming and i ride a motorcycle and that is no fun riding a motorcycle in the pouring rain i did it once i was soaked from head to toe i had puddles in my steel toe boots and man, it was an experience, let me tell you. But I definitely wouldn't be doing that again. 
But anyways, glad the Subaru is working again. Thanks guys for watching. I hope this video can help you guys out if you guys encounter this issue or, you know, maybe give you an idea of how to fix it. So I'm glad I could help you. But anyways, yeah, thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video. Um, I appreciate it. And yeah, Subaru lives to see another day.